The man was pulling a banner but was suddenly smashed through the ceiling by an unidentified flying object. Startled. He was curious to look with a flashlight and saw a squirming ball of flesh. This thing is not an earth creature. Just as the man was fascinated, the meatball suddenly attacked him. Mall colleagues thought he was lazy, but they came closer to find that the man had turned into a zombie. It was not an ordinary ball of flesh. Soon, the mall was open for business. People flocked to the mall to shop. But little did they know that this would be their last time shopping. Chris, who was cleaning up, suddenly found a moving wooden box. He thought it was a child. But it turned out to be a zombie customer. Seeing the other party jumping at him, Chris rushed to the shelves to stop it. But just as he takes a breath, a zombie suddenly appears behind him and grabs him. He pushed the zombie away, then grabbed the bag with food and hit it hard. Archie heard the sound and came out of the room. Archie, who didn't know why, thought he was beating up customers and told the manager of the mall. To prevent Chris from doing anything stupid again, the manager had him tied up. Despite Chris' repeated explanations that there was something wrong with the two men, they didn't believe him until an employee went to check on the customer's condition, which revealed that something was wrong with him. The zombie jumped on the employee and attacked him with tentacles coming out of its mouth. Ken, who was passing by, saw it in time, grabbed his skateboard, and knocked the zombie out. He rushed to the manager with the injured employee and told him what was going on outside. But the manager still didn't believe him and said that it was Super Friday and the customers just looked a little crazy to get the items. The female supervisor also stood up and accused everyone, saying they were deliberately making excuses to leave work early. Do you still want to be the best employee? Do you still wish for the year-end bonus or not? Performance cannot be completed. All wait for the deduction of money. All bosses in the world are the same Ah, Brian did not want to listen to his nonsense and directly called the police but found out how the phone could not be reached. However, at that moment, the employee who was just attacked suddenly twitched and spat out green foam from his mouth. Seeing this scene, the manager also began to panic. He must not die in the mall Ah, Then how to do business? Unexpectedly, the next second completely mutated employees told him to shut up. Now everyone believed the manager was so scared that he hid behind Brian. Marnie picked up the cake and put it on the zombie's face, which made the zombie cursed. At the critical moment, Archie, who knows kung fu, grabbed a nail gun and shot the zombie several times. The zombie saw that is not Archie's opponent and decided to run away. Several people finally realized the seriousness of the matter. Brian also called the police, but the news he heard was desperate. The operator said there were crazy people everywhere and told them to find their way to escape. Then a scream came from the other side of the phone. Hearing this, they rushed to untie Chris and planned to leave the place immediately. However, the manager thought it was wise to stay in the mall until the zombie supervisor suddenly attacked him. But when they arrived at the mall, they found that zombies had already overrun the place. And it seemed that it was not easy to escape. So under Archie's arrangement, they planned to split up. Ken hid in the office with the sick and the old while Archie led a team to clear the mall of zombies. They wanted to take them by surprise. But Brian accidentally made a noise and disturbed a zombie feeding. Luckily, Archie reacted quickly and got rid of the zombies with one shot. After clearing all the zombies, they closed the security door so the hall was finally safe. But the outside was filled with dense zombies. The escape plan was ruined, and they could only hide in the mall to wait for help. At least here, do not have to worry about the food problem. Soon there was a police car coming towards the mall. They thought they were saved. But they didn't know it was a runaway police car that also killed the woman by the door in the process. As the door was slammed open, the zombies outside also poured in. A few people saw the situation and rushed to escape. But on the way to escape, a zombie suddenly appeared from the side and jumped on Chris. At the critical moment, it was Archie who saved him again. He was about to pull Chris to run away when another zombie attacked him. Archie had to let Chris go first. He had to stay and teach these zombies a good lesson. After Chris left, Archie used his knife to cut off the zombie's tongue and then easily solved the zombie the moment it came at him. However, Archie was still careless and was accidentally punched by another zombie. This punch 20 years of kung fu made Archie confused on the spot. The strongest fighting force Archie was so beaten down. Under his cover, Chris managed to keep up with the team and escape to the warehouse. But he also brought a surprise to prevent more zombies from breaking in. They hurriedly closed the door. Marnie picked up a wrench and hit the zombie's head hard, then hit it repeatedly until the zombie was completely dead. But she didn't think that after solving the zombie, the mall suddenly lost power. Luckily, there were many glow sticks in the warehouse. However, at this time, Marnie saw the mall lobby, 
The flesh tumor that fell from the sky was growing at speed visible to the naked eye. Staying in the warehouse is not a long-term solution, but the stubborn manager does not intend to leave and says that life is the people of the mall and death is the ghost of the mall. The zombies seemed to have heard his wish and evolved again. Ready to fulfill him, the crowd was terrified. How this thing cannot be beaten to death. But the zombie pushed down the shelves and separated them. Ready to solve them one by one, Ken became the first lucky one. He was grabbed by the zombie and thrown to the side. Brian wanted to help, but he botched the zombie and pushed it to Ken's side. In the chaos, Ken's hand was injured. He gets up, picks up a wrench, and delivers a fatal blow to the zombie. The others were about to come over to check it out, but Ken stopped them because he suspected that the wound on his arm was bitten by a zombie to prevent himself from hurting them after mutating. Ken planned to stay here and gave them a pair of pliers, telling them to leave through the back door of the warehouse. After Ken's repeated persuasion, the remaining people could only say goodbye with tears, but they struggled to untie the chain, open the roller door, but found the back door connected to the cargo car. The good thing is that there is a skylight above the wagon. If they can climb from here to the cab and drive the truck away, they can leave smoothly. This is the most suitable task for Chris, but as soon as he climbed out of it, he was spotted by a zombie. Strangely enough, the zombie didn't pounce on him but turned away silently, just when Chris thought it was safe. A large group of zombies suddenly rushed over. It turned out that the zombies were calling their companions. Chris hurriedly got into the truck's cab, but the next second he was dumbfounded. This kind of truck he did not know how to drive. While the zombie was not paying attention, he could only return to the carriage again. Knowing that Chris couldn't drive, the manager cursed at him, and the sound disturbed the zombies outside. With a violent shaking, a zombie broke through the carriage and grabbed Marnie. In time, Chris grabbed a pair of pliers and cut off the zombie's claws, saving Marnie. But sooner or later, the carriage will be torn open. They have to abandon this plan and return to the warehouse. Then the group climbed up to the rooftop again, planning to escape from there. But to their surprise, the lump of flesh tumor had already come out of the top of the skylight. Looking at his own painstakingly operated shopping mall has become this way. The manager instantly heart like a knife. This is his life's work. He resolutely opened the skylight and jumped back. Seeing the sarcoma is getting bigger and bigger, and the three must leave the rooftop as soon as possible, so they jumped directly to the garbage can downstairs, using the garbage as a buffer, and successfully came to the ground, but they escaped from inside but found that the sarcoma had occupied the entire mall and finally turned into a super large zombie. Seeing this scene, the three people directly freeze in place. Trying to escape is almost impossible. Brian tried to negotiate with the mega zombie to cover them, but he was directly shot away, because they couldn't find a car that could be used. They could only wait for death. But at that moment, Ken escaped from the mall. It turns out that while he was waiting for the mutation, he found that he hadn't shown any signs of transformation, so he guessed that the wound on his arm was accidentally scraped. Ken took out his car keys and said he would take the two safely away. But just as they were ready to act, the mega zombie threw over a piece of concrete, almost killing them, since they couldn't escape. They had to finish the job with the zombies. To attract the zombies' attention, Ken began to dance in place. Chris took the opportunity to run to a forklift and drove to the zombie's front. And the zombie also found Chris. It stuck to the forklift with its giant tongue. Chris slammed on the gas pedal and backed up the truck, then started a tug of war. When the time was right, Chris released the gas pedal and jumped out of the car, thus using inertia. They successfully defeated the mega zombie and drove the car safely out of the city.